doing is, is I'll be turning uh, what I call my ladies. Now I've demonstrated this before on a Tuesday night. This is just going to be slightly different, very off-center turning. I'm also going to be texturing it with a rust, rustle in stone effect. I'll be using that. I'll just go through different uh, procedures what I do when I'm, when I'm making the small hats. What I do first is I put this on the pillar drill without the, the actual drill itself. Drill out the wood in the circles like that there. Then this particular hut will have a band, acrylic band, and I use a smaller cutter for to do the acrylic band. So I'm not using a big one and I save material that way. So what I do is I put it in between the two bits of wood and stick it together with a uh, mater bond. So I do it. But then, when I have that done, I have a template here, exactly the same size as that there. And this is the hole I had to drill them out with a fastener bit. I just put it down on top of the wood, mark it out, then drill it with a fastener bit. And that's me started to, to make the hat. But as, as, I, as I process, progress, I'll show you how to do the hat. But first of all, I'd like to do the actual lady itself. So we'll carry on with that there. I've marked out centers there. And there and this end here is uh marked about just over a half an inch from me off center turning so i'll carry on with this here now So what I want to do here is just turn this uh, piece to a cylinder first before I do my off-center turning. Okay then, that's sort of the way I want this, so I'll be putting it off center now. It's always important to, to get a wee bridle and do your points, so it means it's just easy to center it better. Okay. So it's important to turn the speed right down, with it being on center it'll be flopping about an awful lot so we'll turn the speed right down just see how that goes okay that's fine want that turned up a bit The faster you can do on the lathe, it's much better because you can see the shadow better. So I'm going to try and turn this up another bit. Then reason. I'm going to put it back on the center again. I just want to get this trued up more, a bit of flat and sand this piece, which I should have done before I put it off center. 
but not a problem. I can just put it back on center again. So as I say, I'll just get this chewed up another bit. Yeah, that should do it. And I want to sand this piece because once it's off after again, I'm not getting a large chance at it. Just need that speed in there a bit. You sound thicker, Mark. So, I want to this just up another small bit. So what I want to do now is do a bit of sand in this part here, but before you do any sand, always make sure you have an extractor valve on, whatever type of system you have, something anyway, just to take away the dust. So I'm putting this back on the off-center mark again. So I want to take another piece off this here. As you can see, it's quite a clean cut. And the faster you have it, the more cleaner cut you'll get. As I say, just a, a nice push cut, gentle cuttings, and you'll, you'll get that, that finish there. So I'm happy enough with that there, so, I, uh, so I'll so continue on and uh, start making the shape of the lady. So always try and get your rest as close as you can to your work, because if it's far out, it means that there'll be a bit of vibration there. So always try and get your rest as close as you can to your work. That makes it, your tooling much more steadier. So we'll just take that rough and gouge again. I think I'll pick the right piece of wood because it's just turning so nice. Th this wood here is ash, believe it or not, brown ash. The grain in it's absolutely beautiful. I hadn't a thick enough piece, so I had to glue two pieces together. But, you know, you can, you, you can hardly see the join, as the man says. Only this part here is starting to come away from me. But what I'll do is I'll uh, put miter bond in there and fill that up. Because if, 
using a spray, that, that piece there will show up, it's, it's no big deal. So what I do now, I have a wee tip, when I'm making my ladies, I do them all the same size. So I have a wee template here. This is going to be the, the body part. This is going to be the upper part of the lady. And the rest of that there is going to be the neck and head. So what I want to do now, this is going to be the waist. So I'll take that right in. Try and not do that too thin because as you go along it will vibrate on you more. So that, that there's enough for that. that should be enough for what I want it for. You know start uh start shaping the the, 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 the lower body now. This is basically the, 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 the head size, but I want to do the head slightly bigger than that there because when the head, you'll see why in a minute when the head tapers in, when you do the hat, you want the hat just to sit on the top and not over the, the, the center part of the head, but you'll see as I go along. So what I'll do now, the calibers, I'll take the size I want. So I'm allowing myself uh, about three mil each side. So I'll give it another wee bit, do no harm. So I want to take it out down about there. Just with a bead on, I'll just say as I want. So, we want to take it down. Maybe a wee bit in the big side, but I'd rather have it that way, and then I could refine it as I go along.
So at this stage, I want to start doing the knack. Just using the small gauge to do the side of Try and uh, have the knack as slender as you can, but I just think it, it looks better. So that's it roughly where I want it. I'm just doing a push cut here again, it'll give you a nice clean cut. A little bit of vibration there. Right, so we'll just leave it at that there now. Put it in the head. So what I'm going to do now with the knack, rather than do it about with the gauge, I, I normally just use your, the uh, rounded uh, chisel and just when you're, when you're scraping always have your rest sitting high and your, your, your tool pointing down because if that was low and you're in the gut there she would catch so just keep your, your rest high and this pointing down and you just, just need a small piece of it very little Just nice and easy, not, not too harsh on it. I should do that. And they get the shape of the head. I simply use a, I just simply use my uh, skew chisel. Just use whatever tool you want. There's no rule what tool you use. I just find this here good. Now the head to me is a wee bit long, so I want to make the neck that wee bit bigger, or longer should I say. Just slightly. You can say you can use this tool too for the neck, you know, it's just your... Yeah, I, can, I can do that too. As I say... The, Now I'm happy enough with that shape of the head. Just take another wee bit off here. Take my rest up again. Point down. And just a small piece. That's all you need. So I'm happy enough with that there. As I said at the beginning, there's a bit of a... a bit enclosed enough there for me. So we've got super glue here, uh, well... A Scarella glue, super glue, yeah. Uh, it's just to fill that in because that would show up if it starts spraying. So it's just a matter of filling that in. Put the on it. Just using the accelerator here to let it go off quick. Just rub that there, right? Yeah, that's fine. So as I say, I want to sand, uh, sand this now. Keeping this part here nice and crisp. Try not to round it off, 
It's just it's, a, it's just better looking rather than being round it. It's gonna be a bit more open there, which I want. It's still in there. It's very important you do that because that will definitely show up when you start spraying it. It's just a bit there, I'm not happy with it, it's not flowing the same, so it's just a matter of taking, as you can see, it comes up and stops there, but I want that to, to flow. It seems very trivial, but what I'm doing is I just like, I just like everything to flow, and it, it looks much more elegant looking. Just going to scrape this again. That's better now. Give that a wee sand. When I'm doing these, I, I, I would spray a lot of them, but it's, it's, I think it's very important to always keep a bit of the actual wood showing, rather than spraying the whole lot. You know, I let you see that it's wood at, for starters, and you're showing off the grain of the wood somewhere. So I'm just going to sand this a bit more. So that's that part. So I want to put the, the sand and sealer on it. So I'm going to apply some sand and sealer. The way I do it, turn it right down slow and put, put plenty on a cloth. Plan B, the stone paint for some reason is not working. So Mark has this white, call it white gold metallic. So we'll give that a wee wear and see what that looks like. I think that looks great. I've just taken the tape off the head and neck. Now I'm just starting to sand it. There was some uh, over overspray on the actual neck, so that was the reason I didn't sand it all at the beginning. So I just tidy this here up now. This is 150 grit. Just finishing off with D20 and that should do it. Just 
Just very carefully that you don't go into the tainted area. I'm going to put some Yorkshire grit on that now. Just finishing off the canoe wax, it's much it's a much harder wax and it's especially if you're handling it, it's just it's just a better job than a softer wax. So that's that part finish. I want to bring this in the center again, then part this off. Just turning my parting through into a slight angle so that it'll sit flat okay. So now we're going to do the uh, the hat. This chuck here has very small jaws which suits this part here very nicely. So we'll just put that on. No matter how small a piece, I always bring my centre up to, to rough it out. It's much safer. As this, as this chuck is a C, a C jaws, you don't need to do a taper on it. But what I normally do is I put a wee groove in there, just tight in there. Take that off. Put that on. And that wee groove in there will just goes in nicely to that C jaw and gets a good grip. So what we want to do now is that's that's far too thick there. I will bring that down to about 12 mil. So what I want to do now get my calipers. When I'm doing this here, I want to get my calipers just about there, not there, because if you put the hat on, just stay it on down. You want it to catch it about there, just on the slope. I know you don't see much of the bottom of the hat, but always finish it well if you do see it. Because you know what it's like, if you happen to shop or anything, people just want to lift it up and look all around it. It's not bad. The sun and cedar on it. Yorkshire grit.
I'm pretty happy with that there, so we'll just start sanding that. That's the lady finish, the hat's finish. Now to put the hat on, just I usually use a, a what you call a mater bond, it's a quite a thick glue, but this gorilla glue here is thick as well, so I'll just use this here and very carefully go around the, the inside of the hat, trying not to get none of the glue there. I have a slight bevel there, so that gives a, a better grip of the glue. So just very carefully, right round it. I always tilt the hat slightly, I think it gives a better effect and just hold that there till the glue sets, it only takes a, not even a minute. There you go, that's a stuck already. So there's my little lady. Hope you enjoyed that.